Hi, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day, and thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. My guest today, Brandon Scott, was raised in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and graduated from New York University's Tisch School of the Arts. His acting career began with a minor role in the 2005 short film Water before landing guest roles on such hit television series as Law and Order, NCSI Los Angeles, CSI New York, Masters of Sex, Bones, and Cold Case, to name a few. He has appeared in the films Knife Fight, Stand Up Guys, Blair Witch, and you all have heard his voice as Kahoot in the Walt Disney animated motion picture comedy Wreck-It Ralph. Brandon has had recurring roles as Ryan Spaulding in the ABC hit series Grey's Anatomy, as Officer Luke Vanchik and Tom Hodgins in Channel Zero, as Corey Lawrence in This Is Us, as Coach J.J. Kerber in the Netflix teen drama 13 Reasons Why, as well as Officer Nick Prager in the Netflix dark comedy series Dead to Me. You can catch him next in the upcoming fourth and final season of Amazon Prime's popular legal drama Goliath. Brandon is also the founding member of LA theater company's Iama, Iama Theater and Ammo Theater. He produces music, pretty great music as I listen to it, under the pseudonym Icarus V and has a band named Verbal Plus Icarus, I think. Make sure to remember this name if you don't already know it. Please welcome to the locker room, Brandon Scott. Did I butcher the name of your, uh, <laughs> no, your band? Good. Verbal and Icarus, but uh, verbal yeah. and Icarus. Verbal Welcome. plus Icarus. Thanks. I feel like I should have. I should have run in. You know, like and, <laughs> you know, maybe I'll just slide in on this chair right here. And glad to be here. <laughs> glad to have you here. Like I said, I mean, I said this backstage, but you are seriously a working actor, and I'm so thrilled that you actually sent me the link to your reels because I had so much fun watching them. Um, right. Let's go back in time. What were you like as a child? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> starting there. What was I like as a child? <laughs> um, good. Um, childhood. I was definitely um, interested in everything. I was, uh, I loved making, writing my own little scripts and filming them. I remember we had a, a, an old like VHS, one of those big VHS camcorders. And um, when I accidentally learned how, if you put someone in the frame and then you pause it and you remove them, and then you start recording again, they'll disappear when you watch the footage back. It just blew my mind. So I just started <laughs> making random movies where every movie, someone had to disappear and reappear and, do some, you know, I was into martial arts, so there was a lot of fight scenes. Uh, Did your siblings? <laughs> yeah, I, I forced them to be in a few of them. Um, okay. But uh, mostly it was me and my friends uh, just coming up with these scripts. Like every time in class, if there was a project due, and um, I'd make a movie and make oh. everyone watch. I still have some of them, and they're awful. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was, that was me as a kid. And, um, I didn't think I would go into acting at all. Honestly. Um, it's just something that so, I kind of, so that was just fun. That was just fun. Yeah. It was just passing time. And, uh, cause I loved, uh, science too. So, uh, all through, I was, I was big into fantasy. I played Dungeons and Dragons, which a lot of people don't know that. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> well, I just admitted it. I just admitted it. Um, and I was honestly uh, more interested in, uh, I thought I was going to go into like physics or something like that. Cause I, I had, I love space and I was like, oh man, it would be great to work for NASA or something. And then um, somewhere that around- That would have been a steady income. That would have been, <laughs> especially <laughs> everything that's going, trust me, everything that's going on with SpaceX right now and with yeah. NASA, I'm just like, sometimes I'm like, <sighs> I wonder if, uh, you know, if I, I don't even know if I would have been able to actually follow through with that, but I was definitely interested in it. Are you still interested? Did you watch the recent launch? Mm -hmm. I've been watching the launches and trying to keep up to date with the Mars rover and, uh, uh, yeah, that that was something watching that land. That was yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just 
I, I think it's just so fascinating the idea of how expansive and unknown the universe is. And that just, I think that feeds the imagination because you can kind of just start to um, dream off of that and stay curious about everything. You know, I mean, what if there's some random stuff going on out there? What about everything here? Like what that we think we know? And uh, so I, I love kind of dipping into that. But um, but then in um, high school somewhere, I had a, a, a teacher who pulled me into drama and uh, things just the dots connected and made sense. And uh, I didn't even know, and being in Alabama, for some reason, I didn't even know you could get a, have a, go to college for theater. And mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to go to college. I knew that was important to my, to me and my family. Um, and uh, so when I found out, oh, I could get a degree in theater and pursue this thing, um, that's kind of how I decided to go to NYU. Um, so, was the uh, you didn't you didn't pick a small or you know tiny school there, you definitely you 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 went hey, um, do you remember the teacher's name? Oh yeah, oh yeah, Caroline, Caroline yeah. Raymond, well Caroline Reddick, but um, yeah, I still keep in touch with her, and that's um, awesome, and yeah, I'm so appreciative of that. And NYU was honestly, I told myself if I didn't make it into NYU, I said maybe I not going to be an actor. And I felt New York was, it was important for me to get out of my comfort zone of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and to go to where um, a, a scary place in my mind, you know, everyone was like, you're going to go to New York, people get stabbed there and stuff. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go where people get stabbed. Anyway, but <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, was there any fear? Oh, yeah, there was a lot of fear. Yeah, out of fear um, and excitement. I think it was it was thrilling, the idea of it. And uh, part of me always, I think, as a child, this is probably a childhood thing. Um, if if people, if someone underestimated me, or if someone looked at me like I was crazy, this part of me wanted to say, okay. I'm really excited about doing this because I believe I can do this. And so I'm not gonna let that uh, fear control my life. And so I think part of it was me wanting to just constantly see uh, how far I could expand and um, challenge that those fears. And, um, and I mean, knock on wood so far, you know, things have worked out. Well, pretty well. Yeah. When that le when that letter from admissions at NYU arrived, do you remember <laughs> that moment? I I remember I was I was hanging with a good friend of mine who uh, also uh, got into NYU, and um, and I didn't know that I had gotten some letter, and it didn't say you were accepted into NYU. It was an invitation to come for something. And um, so I didn't think I got into NYU. And I just remember we were sitting <laughs> in the theater. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> th there was no one else in the theater. It was me and my friend, Steve. We were just sitting on the stage. And, um, and I was busy thinking, oh, man, I'm not going to get to go. I didn't get in. And then I mentioned that, yeah, I got this invitation to some event. And he was like, no, that is the acceptance letter. That is like, that means you've been accepted. <laughs> I guess. And so that's you, when you I had to be told. I love yeah, that. I had to, yeah, be, I had to uh, <laughs> have my mind blown in that way. Well, that, that, hey, that's good though. Yeah. What, what was it like growing up in Tuscaloosa? Tuscaloosa, Tuscaloosa yes. Uh, Tuscaloosa named, I mean, I don't even know if this is still true, but <laughs> this is what we used to say, named after Chief Tuscaloosa, whose legs were so long that they would drag the ground. That's what the story was. But um, Tuscaloosa, uh, it's a small, um, I mean, but it's, I say small, but now it's, um, it's grown a lot. It's a college town in Alabama. Um, uh, University of Alabama's there. Football capital, let's say, of the South. So, uh, uh, Roll Tide, University of Alabama is like, you know, the number one college football team. Um, so growing up there, you know, um, I appreciated a lot of uh, the community I had there. And I, I, I actually appreciated the kind of um, 
the uh, love of of football because it was like a love of um, a love of uh, hard work, being champions, kind of like you know. Um, uh, oh yeah, I want to say hard work. So. Um, okay. So I feel like that's a, a work ethic that I got from seeing, you know, my family, my community, and also just this idea of, you know, you work hard for something and um, you keep, you know, driving towards it. And um, uh, so that that was my experience there. Um, but I was also excited to leave because mm-hmm. I needed, um, because I think in the South, growing up in the South, uh, I thought the South was the world. And um and I, I thought it was important for me to go to New York or someplace that felt very distant so that I can kind of have a culture shock and also experience, you know, have some new experiences. So, um, yeah. So I know February is Black History Month. We're now yeah. outside Black History Month. I know it's so important to not just celebrate that during the month all year long and have conversations. Every day. <laughs> 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 absolutely. absolutely. Well, growing up in the South was, you know, what was, you know, your experience as a, as a black child? If, if you don't mind sharing. No, no, no. Um, I think of that. I mean, I had, uh, you know, I mean, I definitely, I had a, a strong network of, of family that, uh, really encouraged me because in school they weren't gonna you know i don't i don't even remember celebrating black history month in school and so uh and so or even getting necessarily the um education on black history that i felt i feel is important so i had fam my parents were very big on making me do (laughs) i would have to like do my own reports for them and so i love that though (laughs) that's why i but that's yeah. that's why I love the, these conversations, and and I will let you continue sharing that ahead, yeah. because I think there's, you know, you might be teaching another parent right now who's watching mm. how to help educate their own child. I just think that that's why I like asking those types of questions. So can you had so, to do reports for your parents? I love that. Yeah, and um, my mom was constantly giving me, you know, like uh, she was like, "What are you reading for class?" And I'd show her, like, you know white fang or something like that. And then she'd pass me like Mildred D. Taylor and be like, maybe, you know, let's talk about this one. So, and trust me as a child, I was not happy about that at all. Um, But again, you know, looking back, I'm so appreciative of that. And we would, um, we would celebrate uh, Kwanzaa um, and uh, just constantly I felt, um, I, again, I had uh, a, a network um, I was part of this group called uh, Jack and Jill of America, which is about uh, building the uh, future black leaders of America. And so um, so I felt like those were important things to kind of just uh, supplement or fulfill what I was missing from um, just the regular school system, let's say. Um, but uh, other things, you know, like, you know, I went to, um, I was in a Catholic school for uh till about eighth grade and i was it was predominantly white and i was um one of a few uh minority kids and um and then eventually i said i wanted to go to public school because i just i wanted to be around more diversity and um Mm -hmm. and and i do i mean i i thought that i again i'm appreciative of the catholic school that i went to but um when I went to public school, um, I just was around, I went from basically a class of like 30 to a class of like 1500. And wow. um, that was a big shift, but um, I just appreciated again, um, uh, opening up and expanding in that way. And um, there weren't, like think there were things like, um, there weren't, uh, there hadn't been a lot of black presidents, senior class presidents at our school. I think in, in the history of it, I think I was one, like maybe the second or third. And then mm-hmm. um, also we had, which this is why I love Caroline, um, my drama teacher. We had, we did a, um, a Children of Eden in I think 11th grade. And um, she cast uh, me as Adam and she cast uh, 
this uh, a friend of mine um, who's white as uh, Eve, and she's uh, her. She and so there was a biracial couple as Adam is Eve and Noah and I think Noah's wife. I don't remember anyway. But it was so controversial. It was so controversial that um, that there would be this biracial couple as Adam and Eve. And I think it ended up in the paper. I mean, some of this stuff, I'm just so- Oh, I don't doubt that. I'm sure yeah. some, parent, some parents were probably sadly offended. Oh yeah, and, um, but still we went ahead with it and it ended up being just a wonderful production. Um, and I think that again, um, I think that was when I look back, like that was one of the moments where I was, oh wow, we can do this, you know, put on this art, tell these stories and it can actually, you know, um, move or start conversations and hopefully lead to progress. And so, um, but uh, again, there's a charm to, um, I'm really appreciative of my Southern upbringing. Um, but uh, so Did I don't want to just- When you arrived in New York? But does it, can you not hear it now? Um, no, it comes not up. really, no. Yeah, I, mean, I had- a, I'm sure you've worked on it. I did. I had to stay uh, after class with the speech teacher um, and um, work, you know, with a cork in my mouth and work on my articulation. But um, yeah, I had a thick Southern uh, accent that um, it comes out when I when I talk to my family members or if I spend some time back in Tuscaloosa, it'll it, it'll be hard to get rid of. It, it, it'll come back. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's coming up on a year since the George Floyd stuff in May. Were you uh, involved? Did you put yourself out there for the protests? And I was in uh, Palm Springs at the time um, because we were waiting out the pandemic uh, out in a house that uh, we have out there. And so when um, everything started happening, um, we, we, and we were filming out there, we were actually shooting um, this crazy pandemic uh, with, how do I explain this? It's multiple stories across five different continents where the producer and the director um, sent us all camera packages and so my wife and I had to film ourselves. And so- Was there an article in um, a magazine about this? What's the name of this? It's called Did Disconnected. You... It may, it got, it got a, some press. Oh. Yeah, because I think a friend of mine might, have, might be the editor on this, Don Mooney. Don, that sounds very familiar. Um, because I read something about it and I wanted to do it. Everything was, yes, they like, it was written for the pandemic, right? For the pandemic, everything we would yeah. get. I'm going to try while we're talking. To yeah, see yeah. Is... I wonder. That would be such a coincidence. But uh, yeah. So we were out there filming, and then um, the protest happened. And um, for a few days, we were feeling very much we wanted to come back into LA. Um, and then the day we were talking about coming back into LA, the National Guard came in, and um, so we we didn't make it back in for the actual protest. But uh, during the filming of the Disconnected, because it feels like a time capsule about the pandemic, it became less about, I, I'm so grateful that the cast got together and had a discussion about, can we, if this is a time capsule, we have to address the issues that are happening around these protests and around you know the, the killing of George Floyd. So, um, so we started pivoting the storylines to um, reflect that. And so um, I'm, I'm really appreciative that we didn't, you know, stay on course with, hey, we're just gonna talk about the pandemic and these storylines that we had already planned out. We started, um, you know, um, having conversations around, you know, uh, police reform and uh, right. systemic racism um, with the, uh, through, through, through the art that we were doing, so. That's so great that you had something to to work on too, where you could, you know, you know, bring things to light in. It wasn't just, yeah, because it was it was triggering. I mean, it still is. I mean, even with everything that you know, I I find us today was um, just, uh, and I know there's still a uh, conversation going on around the source of the the shootings in Georgia today, but I found myself triggered in the same way as last year of um, 
just all this hate, all this, you know, and, and, um, and too like, much hate, too much hate. And what can we do to, again, uh, keep the national conversation going? Um, because what happens is it, it can get normalized so quick. And especially over the last four, well, previous four years, things became so normalized that, uh, you know, and just don't want the new normal to be that we uh, accept um, all this bullshit. So, yeah. so true. So talk, talk about New York, you know, what was your time like at NYU? And, and our mutual friend, Tanya, who also didn't come from, she came from uh, out of state as well, right? I can't remember. Yeah. Tanya, are you from Iowa? Uh, yeah, Idaho? Idaho. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, uh, I saw, yeah, I went to NYU, met Tanya there. Tanya um, was roommates with one of my best friends, um, Blake, uh, New York. I'm trying to remember. It's so funny. I feel like every, I feel like number one, I've lived so many lives, even though <laughs> that might sound weird, but I feel like every four years. Um, Are you Shirley MacLaine? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. Uh, every four years, I feel like I delete, like it's, 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 it's like we've been trained to. <laughs> what, is, know, what is this black mirror? <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I don't, who knows? That, that could be a good episode. Um, but um, so but NYU, I just remember it being just, um, you know, you're in New York in your, in your 20s in college. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot of ridiculousness. <laughs> but uh, I met some really lifelong friends and uh, collaborators. Um, both of my theater companies are full of NYU kids who um, I went to school with. Um, and, uh, and just... I really appreciated the training we got there. Um, I'm still in touch with a few of the teachers and, um, and I just appreciate the city, man. I, New York is just, New York is magical. And I know that might sound cliche, but uh, it, it's just, it is. Yeah. I, I love that. You know, I feel like LA can be so isolating to some degree because you're spending so much time in your car and LA can be what you want it to be. Like if, if I just, get in my car and go to Silver Lake or I go to, you know, Venice or whatnot, and that's all I do, then that's all LA is. But I feel in New York, you know, you're walking down the street from A to, you know, point A to B, or you get on the train, you go here to here, and you are just interacting with so many different types, cultures, uh, just, I, and, and that's what I, I just, I just love the energy there. Um, though it's cold, Definitely, as an Alabama boy, those winters were. Did you end? No joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, so was it there ever any doubt that you would head west to California? Is that? Oh uh, yeah, I was. I was a theater snob. I was like, I'm only doing theater. I'm never going to film and television. I'm gonna be on the stage for my whole life. <laughs> um. And I do uh, still have aspirations of, I would love to do Broadway, but um, after a while um, I started thinking like, I don't know if I have the voice for Broadway. And um, I, you know, it was, it seemed that, and I started getting discouraged because I felt like I needed to get a bit of a name to get into Broadway. And then also, I think that really I was just denying how much I love film and television. And kind of once I started to, you know, open up to that, which really started with commercials, um, then um, I started realizing, hey, I actually like uh, I like the um, the idea of, you know, with the camera and you can just think things and it's there and um and then I went to LA and it was warm. And I was like, what am I doing in New York? And so uh, that's kind of how. So were commercials the first sort of paying gigs for you out of yeah. school? Yeah. Um, I was waiting tables at a uh, hard rock cafe in Times Square. Oh. And then, um, and it was, it was really like, what's that movie office space with the flare? Yeah. Um, I remember I got in trouble because I wouldn't carry uh, 
like six plates on each arm or something. And part of what I learned to carry that many plates, you had to kind of put one plate on top of someone else's food, kind of a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, just to, I, I, I was not talented enough to do that. And so I just kept played it safe and I would just carry out two trays. And they were like, Brandon, you're not, you know, and so um, that was hard. And then I was working at Righteous Urban Barbecue. I don't even know if it's still there in Chelsea. Rub. Um, oh, I, I didn't know that's what Rub, that's what it was called, Righteous Urban, Urban Barbecue. Barbecue. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's still there, yeah. but that was the spot. Um, and then I got uh, a book. Barbe- what barbecue. did you say? Barbecue's good. Yeah, they have legit I, barbecue. Yeah, Di- dinosaur barbecue. I don't know if you've ever been there. Yeah, love dinosaur. Bar- Sorry, you got me thinking about dinosaur barbecue. Dude, my stomach <laughs> just started growling right now. <laughs> I was like, like, I already ate. Why am I hungry? Um, <laughs> But uh, but I can't yeah. even imagine Hard Rock in Times Square. I never stepped foot in that one. They it be, probably before you were living in New York. It used to be on Fifty Seventh Street. That same one, and then they moved to Times. Well, Square. there was only yeah, they oh. only had one. Yeah, so th- that eventually moved from Fifty Seventh and like Eighth Avenue somewhere around there, and yeah. then moved to Times Square. Yeah, that was. Uh... Because, you know, hey, I mean, look, uh, waiting tables in the whole service industry is great while you're, you know, trying. It's a, yeah, it's a great supplement. Um, I just once I started doing commercial work, um, it just I realized that, hey, I could do that a bit more. <laughs> and so uh, I did a, um, I did like a Coca-Cola commercial that ended up being a pretty nice one that uh, took That's care of. That's pretty me. good. Yeah, it took care of me for a while and to the point where I was like, you know, what? I'm going to quit waiting tables. And then, of course, like six months later, they stopped running that commercial. And I was like, OK, what do I do now? You know, <laughs> I was like, I'm set and <laughs> learned that lesson. Oops. And then Water was your first uh, film role? Water, yeah, Water was I'm trying, Water was a um a short film, uh, my friend's girlfriend, I think it was his girlfriend, was producing at the time. And um, yeah, it was, I, think it was, I think it was a student film I did with some NYU kids. And um, that was, yeah, that was the first one. I actually don't even remember what it's hey, about. That's okay. I remember well, it was in I black and white. I assume you'll remember this one because when I watched the clip, I was like, you know, somebody your age to be standing here shooting a scene with Al Pacino in front of you and Christopher Walken behind you in stand-up guys, were you pinching yourself? Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty nuts. Cause, uh, I'm a big, big, I mean, both of them, but a huge Al Pacino fan. Um, and, uh, what was crazy is, (laughs) the fact that that scene is about he's taken too many Viagra. And <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like, okay, you're going to be in a scene. Number one, a scene with Al Pacino, Christopher Walken <laughs> and Juliana Margulies. Um, and Al Pacino's taken too many Viagra and you're the doctor who has to examine his penis <laughs> and, and make sure that, you know, and I was like, Okay, I, I always figure working with Al Pacino a little bit differently, but <laughs> <laughs> never, never this scenario. And then what was crazy, so we're in the, because it's just the four of us in this scene, we're in the green room. It's just me, Al Pacino, Juliana Margulies, and uh, Christopher Walken. And of course, I, I can be a very shy person, especially when it comes to like these big celebrities. I'm like, I just don't want to make any waves. I'm just going to like be here, do my part. I'm going to say, hey, be professional. And Julianne Margulies is playing uh, Words with Friends with, uh, with uh, Michael J. Fox. And I'm just like, <laughs> what is going on right now? <laughs> and then uh, Al Pacino's like, there's so many things for dicks these days. Can I say that? Sorry. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, there's so many things for dicks these days. And Christopher Walker's like, yeah, yeah. So many, you know, like <laughs> they got dick pills. And then Al Pacino's like, you know, they got like dick, dick devices, and, <laughs> and, and you know, and one of them started talking about there's something for a dick. It's like a a, a a blade, like you can just like pull it up and then put it down. And I'm just, 
that was the green room. And oh my uh, god, it was a lot of fun though. They're they're hilarious, and they just, I mean, it was it, it was wonderful just to number one watch them work, but then just to also just be in a room with them and they're just kicking it, just you know. That that's an experience. Yeah, that was really cool. It was really cool. Like, like I said, it's not something you can easily forget. <laughs> <laughs> and especially now no knowing more um so yeah. before we get to some of these netflix things you know primetime roles in law and order ncsi csi uh masters of sex did do you have a favorite of just the guest starring roles that you've done favorite of the guest starring roles um one of my favorites and it's more because of the look um, is uh, NCIS Los Angeles. I got to shave. I was this, uh, this war veteran. And so uh, I have this crazy cool haircut and I got to do some stunts with um, uh, LL Cool J. Oh, and so cool. that was a lot of fun. But, um, huh. I don't know. I mean, they're all... They're all in this like time capsule of just uh well I guest starring roles gotta be so fun because it's just you you're you're playing somebody different just for that moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, they're fun and they're also uh I think at the time they're just a great, you know, uh resume builder, but also a craft builder because you're just learning to um and confidence builder because I think the hardest thing being uh doing guest star is uh you got to be in service to the the project. You know, you're just coming into a family that's already been established. So mm -hmm. sometimes you're getting used to, okay, I'm coming into this, and uh, you got to get over all those nerves and feelings. But then also find your personal power within that to also, you know, um, take some risks if you can. Um, and so uh, I feel like that was a great, you know, learning experience to kind of like. You know, I want to go in here and serve the project, but I also want to, I think, do what I was hired to do, which is, uh, you know, um, do more than just serve it, you know, to bring mm -hmm. a little bit more. And so um, it took I think I needed all those to kind of get to the place to understand that, you know, then you start recurring and then you do a series regular that uh, it's, uh, you know, having conversations with the director, even though you might feel that, hey, you know, it's like that no small part thing. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes you can get into the mindset of, oh, this is a small part. I'm just going to get here and just do my job when, um, you know, as opposed to changing the lens and getting the place of, you know, like they want collaboration. There's room for collaboration. One of my dogs decided he was tired of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was the ghost. I saw the, 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 the curtain move. Is there one of the guest starring roles that um, you learned something on that you'll never forget? Um, hmm, from the experience, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Yes, everyone. But one that's popping into my head right now is, uh, I w overheard a conversation where one, I can't remember the name of this actor, uh, but I think it was on from law and order, I think, but she was talking about at a certain point, you'll stop doing things, uh, worried about what the next what's going to come from it and you're going to get to the place of focusing on just enjoying this project and not thinking about oh this is going to be the thing that leads to this and that and uh that's something that i always try to take with me because i think that um i think that part of kind of trying to design a career it's important to think about these things but um but once you're there and you're, I think it's just about being there in the moment and enjoying mm -hmm. the moment there and not bringing too much of, okay, I got to do this because if I do this right, if I do this well, then maybe It'll something else. Will, yeah. It's like, just enjoy there, enjoy being there, enjoy being on set with these people and this experience. And then something comes from it. Great. But if not, then at least it makes it a much more enjoyable experience afterwards um especially if you thought you were going to win uh 
an Academy Award or like a, an Emmy <laughs> guest star spot. It's interesting getting getting to talk to you, getting to know you, and and watching some of the things you've done. Well, I watched a lot in the clips for sure. You always do look like I'd say you look like you're you are enjoying yourself. That's, okay. You know, I don't know that you can always tell that, but you you, you do. Um, was your first recurring was Gray's right? Gray's Anatomy. Crazy was a, yeah that was a that was a big big game changer yeah uh -huh. that's a that's a big one and playing a doctor I I, I could never be a doctor in real life but I love <laughs> playing a doctor <laughs> <laughs> did you have difficulty with some of your uh, doctor terminology yes. oh yes <laughs> oh yes oh yes uh, luckily I didn't I I don't think for the majority of the time that I was on Gray's, I had too much doctor terminology, but every now and then, and my, my father's a physician. And so uh, I would always call him up and I'd say like, dad, what is this? What's this word? What does this mean? Um, and, uh, and he would help me with it. He but, must have um, liked so that role time, then. Yo, he loved it. He, <laughs> <laughs> my dad was so excited about that. I remember, um, <laughs> I remember uh, he took me to the hospital. And he was like, <laughs> he's like, you know, let me show you around. Let me show you uh, what, what the hospital's like, you know. And he was going around. And he's like, this one, he's going to be playing a doctor. He's going to be playing a doctor. <laughs> and so, um, but what was frustrating is that uh, I would ask my dad. I was like, so this is what's happening in this scene. Like, I need something to do. Like, what, 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 what would you do? And he'd be, and he would read it and say, well, number one. A doctor wouldn't do this. And I was like, I know, Dad. I know, I know. That. He's like, he's like, there's no way a doctor would say this. Blah, blah blah. I was like, I was like, I know, I know, I know. But don't worry about that. I gotta figure out how to, you know, do it <laughs> anyway. So, but uh, yeah, it was a. You're fun like, time. I want to come it's... back the next day, Dad. So make sure I do this right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm not gonna go in there and say, hey, so uh, yo, um, this is not what any, you know. But um, <laughs> my dad but, yeah, was... said, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That was a fun time, and 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 that was a, a really cool experience because I think at the time, I think that was that was one of the first times that I got on a show that I was actually watching too. So there was that oh. uh, pinching myself, yeah, that that's nuts. And um, so and, then uh, meeting you know, that cast was it a little intimidating having come from watching always, it? Always, I mean, this if. If this hasn't become a recurring thing already that you've picked up on, I'm always intimidated by uh, <laughs> by getting on these sets and meeting these people. I'm just outing myself right now. Um, uh, yeah, so that was, uh, you know, um, yeah, kind of getting used to that idea of I'm going to be working with these people. Um, they're these huge stars. And um, the imposter syndrome that comes in of, why am I here? Uh, and uh, but uh, you kind of get over that, and then they just—they were lovely, fun to work with. Um, and uh, I think one of the first days on set, I was so—I <laughs> was so excited. Uh, I was hanging with some of the other interns, and I just—I don't know—I did some silly thing of where I like, you know, like where you jump and you click your feet together or whatnot, and I put my hand on a banister that wasn't a fully secure banister because it's a set and all down the hall, the banister. Dish, dish, oh, dish, dish. No. So that was like one of my um, first days on set. And after that, it's like, I can't go any, <laughs> can't go can't, any worse. If they didn't, worse. if they didn't can me for the next day, then I'm okay. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh geez. That's so, a scary thought. Yeah. Um, well, 13 Reasons Why, I, uh, I'm a big fan. I uh, had read the book long before the project oh, wow. came about because yeah. I, I volunteered years ago for the Trevor Project, oh. um, which is a crisis intervention and suicide uh, prevention hotline. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had heard about the book somehow, I, you know, maybe the maybe the Trevor project was telling us about it or something. And it was just so realistic. Yeah. You know, because I had, you know, taken calls from people. Um, did you know about the book before? You know, I, 
before I, I remember learning that it was a book, but honestly, I keep forgetting that it was a book first. Like even you just mentioning it again, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah I forgot it was a book first. Jay, I'm blanking on Jay's last name. Who the author? It? Okay. Jay, Jay something, yes. Mm. Cause I remember when doing the research for, uh, and watching the first season, um, I never read the book though. So, um, but I came on, um, I just remember hearing a lot of people talking about it. And I think I came on around the time that at first there was uh, an article had come out trying to link an uptick in, mm. in um, and I remember going on to do press for something and they were like, uh, don't mention anything about 13 reasons right now because this uh, article has come out. And so, um, but um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that. What was the experience like? 13 Reasons, uh, again, intimate <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, with this guy. No, these, uh, it was, I love that character. I love that it's tough conversations. I, I think that it was important conversations to be had. And these kids, I, I say kids, but they're adults. But I okay. feel... Um, Maybe because of they're in high school in the show, but they're freaking adults. Um, <laughs> they are so passionate and loving and just um, I think they're just the perfect people for the, to tell this story and these stories. And um, uh, they were so welcoming. But I think um, one of the um, the I mean, a part of me that like, I mean, I, I felt like I bonded with them as their coach, you know. But one of the things that warmed my heart was all last year um, during, you know, the, the, the conversations around uh, racism and everything, all of them were very vocal, active participants. And um, that just, I mean, that just warmed my heart, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it was a, a cool set to be on. And um, they're all so talented. And again, I love the, I love the character because, um, Cause again, I grew up doing martial arts and, um, we had, uh, I had a couple of senseis who gave us a lot of tough love that I appreciated. Um, and, uh, and so, and I think I had, I was also doing, um, I had been doing a good round of therapy myself during this time. So, uh, I remember being doing the audition and the casting director said, um, you know, this guy is has his own stuff, but he's going through therapy himself and he's learning how to kind of shift the lens. And even though he grew up this certain way, he's trying to learn how to relate to these kids um, in his own way, but also meet them halfway. And, um, and that was something that I really connected to uh, from some talks I had in therapy. So I just felt really, it was a great role to kind of jump in at the time and, um, and again, after seeing two seasons of the show, I was like, these kids need some love. They need some love. <laughs> they need, How many seasons were there now? Were there four or th four, three? Four and all. Four. Yeah. Wow. Which is really amazing because the, the first season's the book. The first season, it just, yeah. it, But it just did so well that um, Netflix was smart. You know, they... Yeah. they they extended it. Um, I, I have to ask, because you said it twice, and I meant to ask earlier about what kind of martial arts but my question that's really important to ask is have you watched cobra kai <laughs> Obra kai. Cobra kai. do you watch cobra kai do you like cobra kai oh we we i i have so i'm an 80s kid my husband's yeah. um nine years younger than me so i think he knew karate kid but i wanted to watch it when it first came out and we delayed it for whatever reason yeah. And then we then we just picked a weekend and started and we didn't stop. And he says it is like the perfect combination of cheese and nostalgia yes. rolled into one. And we loved every second of it. Every second of it. Uh, yes. So I'm I'm with you there. Um, oh, you want to. Oh, Cobra Kai. <laughs> oh, I see. He, he's like, we talking about Cobra Kai now? <laughs> <laughs> um. I, yeah, my wife and I, she had, she's never, she still hasn't seen The Karate Kid. Um, and wow. so, yeah. And so I had been telling, what's crazy is I'm a big 
Okay, so I, I grew up doing uh, taekwondo. That's what and, I was gonna. That was my mm. martial arts question. And then when you said it again, I was like, oh, it's got to be Cobra Kai. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's more important. That's more important. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, well, I did taekwondo and then Shotokan karate and a couple other things. But um, like I was saying, when I made these videos, it was all like I watched all these kung fu movies and stuff. So I was a big Karate Kid fan. Um, even when my wife and I were on our honeymoon. Right. I was trying to get her to watch Karate Kid for so long um, uh, on like some of the downtime when we were uh, on our honeymoon. I just was like, you know what, I'm going to just watch, you know, Karate Kid and maybe she'll come over and watch it. And she was listening to her book or reading and stuff. And I ended up watching all four Karate Kids all, you know, over the course of like a month. But um, so that's how much I love the Karate Kid. Cobra Kai. Similarly, I pushed off for the longest time, and then we heard so much news about it. Eventually, yeah, was... eventually, my wife was like, "Okay, let's watch it." We sat down and binged the first two seasons in like two days, and then the next season came out. I think like two months later, because this is just last year that we binged the first two, and I think it came out on like January six or whatnot. They pushed it up or whatnot. And by the end of that day or that morning, because we started, you know, at like 12 a.m., we had finished the third season. So huge Cobra Kai fan. Um, so, but she watched it still oh, having not it? seen, but still yeah, having not. So that's, I, I find that fascinating. That, I mean, because think how much you and I loved Cobra Kai because of our experience. Our experience. Yeah. You know, so that's interesting. Yes. Now, did you say your husband has seen, or he still? Oh, has. he totally has seen. He has seen Karate Kid. By now. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, but I just, I don't know. You know, I, I think he thought this was going to be more, more cheese, and you know, but, but he loved it, loved it. You know? Yeah. And it was just like you, just make the decision. Like I'd wanted to, I, and it was on YouTube, for, you know, first, mm -hmm. and then Netflix picked it up, and they just did it. I, I mean, it, first of all. It was amazing because Mr. Miyagi is basically the only one not alive. Yeah. You know, that they really had every single person you could have had come back. And I mean, look, I hope this isn't a, a spoiler. For I know. Anyone. I should have said that. <laughs> he hasn't finished season three, but season four, I'm t because Karate Kid 3, even though Karate Kid 1 is one of my favorites, right? Um, Karate Kid 3 is the one that sticks with me in such a way because I feel that um, what uh, Daniel was going through in Karate Kid 3 with, um, I can't remember his name, but who ends up being the, like his uh, adversary in Karate yeah, Kid yeah. 3 yeah. and who, who, who's also the other war vet teacher who comes in. Um, that one sticks with me so much because I felt like, I don't know, I, maybe because I was in high school and going through my own little karate tournaments and stuff. But um how season three ended, I'm super excited for season four because if they bring some of that Karate Kid 3 cast back, just... Um, are they available on something to watch? Because I I don't know that I've seen every yeah, Karate, Karate Kid. Uh -huh. You know, I know I've seen at least probably the first two. I'd have to really watch them all. Yeah, I mean, I knew everybody who showed up, so I probably did, but it's been a lot, you know... It's a long time. I'm I'm much older, so I saw them when they first came out. So yeah, they're. Uh, I, th I think I think I just rented them, but I'm not yeah. sure they're they're they should be available somewhere. But three three's good. And well, then, have you told your agent you need to be in one of those? Man, I've been <laughs> told my agent. I, a friend of mine put uh, tweeted me with one of the writers um, of uh, Cobra Kai, and I tweeted him. I said, "Yo, man." I got a, a, a mean sidekick, you know. I don't know if I could play a kid, but <laughs> give, give me a shot. Um, but I think they're in season four. I think they've already started shooting. And are you right um, a black belt in anything? I am a black belt, yeah. Black belt. Oh, amazing. Taekwondo and Shotokan, yeah. And what is, I, I don't think I've heard a Shotokan. Is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Shotokan is karate, basically. Um, Shotokan karate. So, um, yeah. I took karate probably when Karate Kid came out, very, very young. Yeah. Um, Did you like it? I loved it. My dad yeah. had gotten sick, and I think that's how come I had to get out of it, and I never um, went back. But I, I always really did love it. Like, I know, you know, it was 
I still yeah. pretend I know what I'm doing and I don't, but. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. What's so funny is you asked me how I was as a kid, and uh, I would, I mean, I hate to say it, I would kick a lot and um, accidentally end up kicking people a lot. <laughs> and uh, so supposedly I kicked my, um, my like aunt on accident or something, you know, and uh, my dad was like, Put that boy in karate <laughs> so he can learn how to control <laughs> yeah. himself. Discipline. He needs <laughs> yeah. discipline. So oh that's how it started. So yeah. funny. Oh, I'm so glad we talked about <laughs> Cobra Kai. I love Cobra. I um, love, it. We, love it. So I, I assume um, Starstruck again getting cast, you know, in Christina Applegate's Dead to Me. Yeah. yeah. What was, and, and what a funny show. Uh, it's I, that, that one, yeah. I, I still like, again, another one where I'm just like, because. You know, you do these shows and then you you just never know. Yeah. And that's again the thing about being just present and in, and there and enjoying it. And uh I mean that was one that we had so much fun shooting. Um, but just I, honestly, in my mind, I was just like, I don't know, maybe this is cynical me, but I was just like, okay, great, it's gonna do well, blah, blah, blah. But I never expected it to be as much of a hit as it was just i mean not for any reason of what was going on on set it's just like i just was like there's so much content out there you know who knows but um but i just remember yeah there i loved mary with children i loved uh um yeah what's the one that big movie i love christina and i can't think of it now um I, was it don't tell mom the babysitter's dead uh it could be, yeah could um, be and then I Linda yeah. But I didn't know her much until Bloodline. Bloodline. See, and I was just watching Bloodline around the time when the audition. That's how I really got to. Yeah, she's fantastic. That's a she great gr show. She was phenomenal in that. And then she's phenomenal in Dead to Me. Up, yeah. You know. I and just there, watched you, you, you. You're singing that episode. That was another cool the, thing, too. The karaoke. Yeah. Because. Uh, do you remember what song? The yeah, oh, Drive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, at first it was supposed to be um, Tracy Chapman, because for the audition I had to sing uh, uh, Fast Car. Oh, yeah, the Fast oh, Car. Oh, yeah. Um, but she doesn't really give license to a lot of her material. And so, oh, interesting. Um, and so it ended up being Drive, which I thought was good for her. Really great. Yeah. Again, yeah, good for her. You know, to, um, you know if, if the. Yeah, make she's like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> I don't need those bucks. <laughs> wow, that's great. But yeah, the, yeah you, you sound great. You're a great singer. Like I told you, I, I, I was listening on Spotify uh, yesterday. Was... <laughs> well, how would you describe the difference between your solo and the band stuff? Because there is a little difference in, yeah, uh, tempo, I'd say. If yeah, that's I, the right description. Yeah, you, you got it there. Um, well, the band stuff is is definitely with um, – so Malcolm Barrett is – I don't know if you know – Malcolm Barrett, the, who's verbal. Okay. Um, he is an actor. He's in um, everything now. Um, he was on Timeless. He played Rufus on Timeless. Um, he's in this new uh, Aretha Franklin um, series, the genius one with uh, Cynthia yeah. Erivo. And, oh, yeah, his face looks familiar. I'm looking him up. Yeah, so Malcolm Barrett, yeah, we went to college together, and um, Malcolm and I, so the band is Verbal and Icarus, he goes by Verbal, I go by Icarus, and that, he raps, I sing, we're mostly uh, exploring. Yeah, um, it, felt more, it felt a little more rappish, but not, you know, in a, in a I, I liked the vibe of it. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's um, I'd say in that one, we kind of... <clears throat> Because the album's called Fun House, we kind of try to explore. Uh, it's like a lyrical uh, synth roller coaster through, like how a Fun House can be exciting but also dark. Um, we kind of capital I for Icarus. Yeah, capital I, yeah, verbal and Icarus, um, or verbal plus Icarus. Um, but uh, well, I'm gonna put up yours first. So, uh, verb. So that one's more like hip hop soul. 
while um, Icarus V, yes, is uh, more, um, I, I work with uh, these great guys, Merrick Woodard and uh, Stephen Roy, and it's more, it's like a grab bag of, we listen to everything, all sorts of stuff. And so Icarus V is more, I'd say a bit more down tempo, a bit more um, uh, intro, uh, uh, introspective and a uh, little bit more laid back soulful. Um, experimental soul, I would say Icarus V is more ballads and things like that. While Verbal and Icarus, we're trying to like get you dancing, get up in the club. Yeah, I, and not that I fully know um, uh, hip hop, but I would have said hip hop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not yeah. something like I I think I know how to necessarily describe, but yeah. that's what I would have um, for the Verbal and Icarus. Yeah, yeah. That, is it that way? Uh, yeah, no, no V at the end, but sure, you can find it oh, either okay. way. Yeah, it's a weird. We're still branding is one of those things that we're still trying to figure out. Um, but uh, that's perfect. Um, right. Um, are you going to record more? I'm actually working on a solo album, Icarus, a new Icarus V album um, that is a lot of fun. But what I love about this, and this is why I always like when people are like, "I'm, I'm listening to your your albums." Uh, every album feels so old to me um, because they're all self-recorded. Um, they're also all what's taught, what's being talked about. A lot of them, they, they remind me of like, you know, five, eight years ago, let's say that. What I'm loving about what uh, I'm creating right now is it really is all inspired by the last year, the pandemic, um, and you know uh, everything that's going on in the national international conversation, and so I'm really excited to put this out. Hopefully, can get it out as a time capsule now, and then probably in five years from now, I'll be like, oh, that's I hate that album. Well, but, hopefully, uh, you can look back and say, you know, we've made some changes. Yeah, that would be a nice way to. That, look that's it. really the most, you know, let that be a, you know, a a pinpoint marker. Hopefully, yeah, marker that mm -hmm. we can. Uh, we can say we've we've grown from the shit that you know we've all been through. Yeah, that'd be nice. Are you are you big into music? Do you listen to a lot of music? I mean, I listen to a lot. I've got an eclectic. I, yeah. I like dancing, so I, I. But basically, I like anything. I like you know, A to Z. Yeah, I was like, yo, if you got some, I'm always asking people. I. I you know, for new music, new books, new whatever, you know what I mean? So if you, at uh, any yeah, time, you know, I, now I just really Spotify is the, so glad we did Spotify. Cause it's I gotta so, get Spotify. I don't have you Spotify. really. Cause it'll, it'll, um, it'll just craft things for you. You know, it, yeah. by, by things that you start listening to, it'll start putting or recommending playlists and things like that. And, uh, yeah, you really, You'd, you'd, you'd love having that. If you love, you know, you love music that much, you'll have access to. Yeah. Are you and, sure you're not sponsored by Spotify? Is it like I'm not at all. <laughs> hey, maybe someday. <laughs> someday. <laughs> someday. Hint, hint. I know, well, you just sold me on it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get it right now. Well, you, I mean, you that. love music. You, you absolutely should. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, this is us. What a great role for, you know, what a great role. Um, I mean, part of a great show, yeah, wow. but it really, you know, in that conversation, you know, of teaching a young black kid about his own, you know, here he is growing up as a black child in a white family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're, you play a role model to him. What yeah, was it that, like being part of that experience? Well, uh, Again, I mean, again, another uh, role that came in at a time where, I mean, I felt like uh, ready for it, but also I needed it too. Um, so, um, uh, you know, um, because I, you know, I had black role models in my life growing up, but also going, like we talked about going to a Catholic school, I could relate to wanting to have uh, an adult there who I could see myself in. And so, um, so there was something that was, I, I love when you can get a role that, you know, connects to something about yourself or your past or something right. that, and then there could be some healing from it or, um, and so um, in ways that I was like, oh, I didn't even know that I, you know, like, I think at the time I didn't even know I was 
hungry for that in a certain way or that I, I didn't even know I didn't have that until, um, you know, as a teacher, a black teacher um, at my school until uh, really, I mean, like when I was reading this and then so, um, so I appreciated that as, you know, as an artist who's always looking for roles that can kind of just, you know, again, um, hopefully to help me learn something more about myself, but also help other people learn something more about themselves too. And, um, but uh, what was rough was <laughs> having to binge four seasons of This Is Us before shooting it. My wife and I were just every night. Every day, just, oh my God, puffy <laughs> eyes. Crying, crying is such a beautiful show. Um, did you did you have to, or you just wanted to? Well, I, I wanted to. I always when, um, uh, yeah, I tried to. I had never. I'd heard about it again. I think I actually auditioned a long time ago for, uh, or during the first season for Sterling Brown's part. Totally, well, did not under did not get that part in a certain way. Um, uh, but. Um, I remember that show. I remember reading the pilot and being like, oh yeah. Uh, and everyone was talking about it, but I had never watched the show. I was in one of my periods of where I'm not watching a lot of television. So I wanted to catch up on what the show was. And so, I mean, number one, I, I didn't know they were really still making uh, shows with like 18 to 22 episodes per season. Um, and then realizing that we had to watch, you know, like four seasons of all that content it, it seemed like a daunting task at first, but it's such a beautiful show and so well done. And um, so well done and so well acted for so somebody who's well, yeah. an actor. Yeah. My God, watching those people tear up the, the, the scenes is just something. And they are, again, it's, I, I keep knocking on wood that I've had these wonderful experiences on sets because they are a lovely set, like a lovely, welcoming wonderful group of people. So I think all the heart that you see from watching the show, all that love is, you know, there That's on great set. to hear. Yeah. You, you would, you, you kind of, uh, not that I, I, I would like to believe it because you, you, there are so many young children in that environment too. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know, you would hope that they're, they're having a good experience in that. Um, they're funny too. Those kids are funny. Those kids are, Lonnie Chavis is <laughs> all of them. They have me crack it up. They, I That's mean, right. Really well, and you know what? You know, I know this is a term that everyone uses, but it's so important. The representation matters. And yeah. for a young black kid to have, a, you know, a black teacher, mm -hmm. you know. It's very, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's, cool. I think it's so important. And a story that, again, I love how they, they tell the stories because these are all stories that I think that um, – like you talk about, yeah, the the importance for especially, I mean, for any black kid to see, you know, to have a peer like that, but or an adult like that, but um, or or not just black, any you know, anyone to have someone they can see themselves reflected in in their stories and their culture, but um, again, how they just so masterfully handle those stories, mm -hmm. and um, I think that. I think they have such a, an interesting audience because I know like, I know people, I think a lot of people are being introduced to new subjects, new themes, new uh, issues through this show that maybe they knew existed, but didn't really like, you know, have like a uh, context or like interaction with. And so I, I just love how wide the reach of the show is because um, if you see the Twitter feeds and things like that, so many people are just talking about, oh, I'd never thought of this, or I just learned this, or the importance of this, there's the conversation that continues. Well, yeah, I mean, know? that's, it is the, it is the conversation. I mean, that's the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, you, you think of, you know, a family who might be watching this together. Mm -hmm. and, you know, but yeah, there's, there's, it, it's so beautiful. It really is. They really have done, <laughs> but you definitely, I can see that you cried for a few. Uh... <laughs> and I just, I mean, and when I, when I saw that, you know, I love the idea that the, you know, the, I love that they allowed the character of Jack to be jealous, uh, you know, yeah. uh, and intimidated by this presence. And I love that they allowed us to kind of, you know, my character to have a bit of like, 
a want of some sort of ownership over and protection over this this kid. And then I just love how the two men resolved it to some degree with, you know, he just handed over a book and a conversation. And it's just, you know, I, I just thought that was just a, such a beautiful and simple way to just, again, to approach that topic. And we're all human beings. So it's, yeah. uh, you know, we're all sharing in the experience of life. So, you yeah. know, it, it's so interesting. Um, we had a, a, a fan earlier from, she says she's a Georgia peach. She was asking, <laughs> do you have a guilty pleasure during the pandemic? Oh, um, in terms of television, I would say we watched um, the Spanish show called Elite. <gasps> do you know Elite? Do I know Elite? <laughs> Brandon, do I know Elite? Yes. <laughs> so good, isn't it? That was... I and was... that is that is great to... That is, <laughs> I love that you just picked that as a guilty pleasure because it is such a guilty pleasure. Yeah. It was, I thought it ended so well, those three seasons. Um, and then I, I'm a, I have a big sweet tooth. So I, 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 I would need therapy being in school with those. Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> there I would so need massive therapy. Massive <laughs> therapy. I mean, uh, yeah, they need, they need a coach Kerba or something. <laughs> they really, yeah. They need a few slaps, man. Actually, um, yeah. They, coach Kerba couldn't. Are, can exist in that they world. Are, that, that's a talented bunch too, isn't it? Such a, yeah, that was a very talented cast. And um, and again, right. they explore some so themes. That, that you brought that up. That's okay, yeah, I know a lot of other people who I bring that up to, they're like, I don't know this, you know? Yeah. Um, I love that you know that show. There's so much stuff that you just may never hear of. I mean, you know, on that, we, but it is word of mouth, but Elite is... Well I get done. overwhelmed. Yeah, that's why I get overwhelmed a lot by so that's why sometimes I might need to take a break from television or from documentaries or whatever because I'm like I'm just, I, I start stressing out because I want to see everything, you know. Um, everything. There's so much. I mean, it really is a renaissance. I say it all the yeah. time, but it, there's such good television. I mean, I, I know you relish in the moment, but like, I mean, it's, it's got to feel pretty. You know, you've been a part of some amazing you know, series. Have, yeah. Yeah. I have to remind, sometimes I have to take a step back and remind myself that because I, uh, um, yeah, I it just, I, I have older actors who I speak to who say it never goes away. This feeling of uh, whether you're not doing enough or you're not where you want to be or, or really the thing that gets me is um, I'm never going to work again. You know, I was speaking to a, uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, he's he's like he's pretty much like a, a godfather to be Frankie Faison, and so um, he was in Coming to America, and, mm -hmm. uh, Banshee, and um, he's done he's done everything the the Hannibal Lecter's or the uh, Silence of the Lambs series. Um, but he's like you know that feeling of you're never going to work again is always going to just be there, even no matter how old you get, how you know how long you work, and things like that. And so. Uh, so again, yeah, it's 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 good to take a step back and say, yeah, it's, it's been some fun projects. Some, I just hope that they've been some. Uh, I think also where I want to move more is I just hope they've been some inspiring messages and or something that just you know, in addition to me having fun with it, helps someone else out there. And I want to do more things in that light. Well, I would have to say, I mean, like you know, the character on This Is Us, I'm sure you. You'll, you'll hear from people, you know, through social media and stuff about that impact. Someday you're going to meet a young kid yeah. like the young Randall, who you probably had a major effect on because of that. And probably yeah. Coach Coach Kerber uh, as well, I'm sure. You know, I, uh, yeah, a lot, both. Yeah, Coach Kerber, a lot of few, uh, quite a few, will, you know, tweet me or whatnot or like hit me up on Instagram and say like, yo, I love I, I loved that. That reminded me of my coach. Then every now and then, so I had one dude who said, if you were my coach, I would have punched you in your face. <laughs> I was just like, okay, okay, you, man. You, you got to love social media. They, they, <laughs> they uh, can hide behind that. Well, yeah. before I let you go, you have to talk about uh, Prime's Goliath. Uh, you're in season four, opposite, if I'm not mistaken, Billy Bob Thornton, Dennis Quaid, Amy Brenneman. 
Well, that's last. Season. Yeah, they're in this. Oh, season. so oh, well, actually, yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, oh, uh, don't get in trouble. Like <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, the people who this this season's cast, uh, which is really dope, uh, Bruce Dern, oh, wow. um, J.K. Simmons, oh, um, my God. Uh, and then yeah, Billy Bob, William Hurt. And uh, Nina Ariande, the from the you know, previous cast, but then other people who come in are like Jenna Malone um, from uh, Hunger Games and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Haley Joel Osment from uh, uh, he Sixth has Sense. totally been he's been coming back in these yeah. great roles. Fierce, I'm, yeah, I've loved seeing him in some great roles. Um, what is Goliath? Because I don't know that one. It's a uh, um, how do you describe it? He's Billy Bob Thornton plays a detective, who, or not a detective, a lawyer, sorry, a kind of down and out lawyer who used to be, a, um, or sometimes still deals with uh, addiction. And, um, and uh, he was like a high profile big lawyer who uh, now he's like got like a small time firm. And it's kind of like him taking on all these big corporations as someone who used to be a part of the big machine. And um, so I think that's where the kind of like David and Goliath aspect come from, comes from. But uh, he, yeah, he's almost also, you know, the, the stakes are high. He's almost a detective in his own right because he's, you know, going after the truth in a way that gets him in danger all the time. But um, uh, it's, it's so well done, so well told and so well shot. Like I think the cinematography and the, of course the acting is just, Freaking phenomenal! Yeah, yeah. I got it. We might have to check that out. We just finished. Tell me your secrets on Prime. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, how was that? That's good. Amy Brenneman and and um. Oh my uh, god, I love Lily, her. Uh, Lily, Lily Rabe. Lily Rabe. Ah, yeah. uh, love her. Yeah, love my both boy. Of them. Um, Marquis uh plays the cop. Uh, why can't I think of his name? Marquis Richardson, right now. Um, or friend, uh, someone I know. He, I think he played the cop. Lily Rabe's. Maybe loving oh, something, yeah, 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 um, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, love. It. He was great. Yeah, loved him. Loved um, him. Oh, yeah, he's great about in that show. Yeah, yeah, I got it. He's check great it out. in that. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know his name, and I, I didn't recognize his face, but he was really great. Yeah, he's he, he, yeah. It's a great, it's a great role that nice. he has. Yeah, it's a, it's a great role. We're watching Viking on Prime at the same time. Have you watched? Vikings, are you? No. Do you watch those types of like? Did you see the last king, king, the last kingdom on Netflix? You know, this is the thing. I love reading like fantasy books or like just historic. You know, like um, those, those like uh, last kingdom. Go to that first. If you okay. like that, then you'll like Vikings on Netflix. It was okay. really great. Um, and, and I meant to ask you earlier, since you you like that, I assume a big Star Wars person. Dude, I just want to be, yes, I want to wield a lightsaber and I want to be a black guy who rides a horse and shoots something from my hands in like a fantasy thing. Like, I just want to do magic and I want to use a lightsaber. Well, so you write music. Do you, uh, do you write screenplays yet? <laughs> no, but I am. Now, this is really ambitious and I will share this with you. I am trying to write a, a book. Uh, oh, because amazing. I grew up reading all these fantasy books, playing Dungeons and Dragons and stuff, but I never really found, uh, and there are more out there now, but I never saw a book that, like, I read a book that I really saw myself in. And so um, that's why I'm trying to write one right now, which is. I, so I've started to do uh, interview authors, you mm -hmm. know, that, need, you know, trying to give them exposure. And I, I've had two uh, black authors who wrote recent, you know, one, a really young children's book, mm -hmm. but it's the same thing, you know, to one of them was writing it for her, for her kids. So they get to see other kids. Um, my last question, well, two last questions. Uh, since you just said it, is there a book that had a really big impact on you? Um, I mean, well, yes, mul I, there's like, you know, like the autobiography of Malcolm X was a big one that I remember my folks, uh, again, making me read, <laughs> um, but I'm so appreciative. And of now that. happy, and now it's happy today that it, they did. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to, you know, a, a book that I love that I revisit often is uh, The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. Um, it's just, um, 
how do I describe it? It's just like these, are they parables or just these things that he, he talks about life. It's about, a, I think it's about, I'm going to butcher it right now. I think it's about a guy who's going off. He's like a small, they're part of a small community and he's going off to like die or something. And they're like, wise man, teach us the things you've learned from life. And he'll just say these things like, as a parent, you shoot the arrow towards the bull, the mark, but you got to let the arrow go where it wants to go and be okay. <laughs> you know, like, but he's so much more yeah. beautifully and elo eloquent. I always so, butcher trying to re retell, a, retell <laughs> yeah. something. Read the book. Um, yeah, exactly. That's easier. And my last thing, pandemic. Is there yeah. something you learned about yourself, Brandon, during this time that you you would say you didn't know prior? Hmm, that's a hard one. Yes, I, I'm trying to think of which one. Um, aside from that, I can bake. Um, Ooh, what, 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 what's your go-to? A uh, pound cake. Mm. I, I've been making some mean pound cakes, but uh, I think... Oh, we have to go back. You said you were a sweet tooth. What, where did that fit in earlier? Oh, about guilty pleasures. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, guilty pain. This, th this is a sweet tooth house. Yeah. I. What house isn't? I mean, how can it not be a house if you don't have a sweet tooth somewhere? Um, well, you also come from the South, and the South the is the best for, you know. Yeah. There's a, there's a pound of butter in your mashed potatoes. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> but I think back back to your question. I think one of the things I learned is, uh, or maybe whether it's about myself, I'm really curious, um, or I've been looking at how much fear can drive decision making, and um, and I just think there's so much fear going around in general, and especially during the pandemic. When I look back to like things kind of sparking off, and um, and I honestly think a lot of you know like you know. <laughs> Q and on and all this stuff is about just fear. And I just am really curious. And I've been asking myself, how much do I let fear just drive me? And, 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 and I think I've learned that, um, that I have a bit more control over the fear. I can use the fear, whether it's for good or whatnot, but I don't have to just be so uh, reactionary to everything. So mm -hmm. um, that's something that I've been exploring and been curious about, you know, through certain conversations with friends, you know, and um, just again, I'm really curious how all this five years from now and the same, like I've also been looking at like, I was in New York during 9-11 and uh, I'm, I'm assuming you probably were too. And um, certainly was all these ways in which we experience trauma and uh, how they manifest in these invisible ways, even as we, you know, years from there. Because there was something about the pandemic that reminded me of so much of September 11th. And yeah. again, I'm just curious, again, what tools do I need to put into place to not just be um, a blindly responding to now and not kind of taking more ownership over some of the things that I'm either dealing with or not trying to like push them away, but kind of like just really analyze dive into it and hopefully uh, grow from it. Uh, Cause I, I know like 10 years from now, I'm hoping that there's been a lot of growth from this period and not again, like those markers yeah. we talked about. Yeah. Maybe my album, it'll be nice to like make <laughs> yeah. an album and be like, okay, okay. There's been growth. There's been growth. Okay, you know, growth. it's interesting that you say that. And uh, I, I love that we're ending on this, but um, the difference of the pandemic in nine 11 is I don't, and and what you're saying about QAnon and the misinformation, thankfully, I d don't believe, you know, social media was not as strong during 9-11. You know, we, we could have been under a rock yeah. hiding in that fear. Think about if that had happened, you know, with the every social media channel and every 24-hour news, the way the, the way the pandemic was, would yeah. probably would have been really 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 frightening i haven't even thought about it that way that's a that's scary that's really scary yeah i mean yeah. It, you just made me think of you know because you're right i mean we fear you know i think a lot of the fear has come from not only the misinformation but actually facts yes you yes. know because facts can still make us all scared but you know 
9-11, we literally only, I think for the most part, it was just the TV. I didn't also have the phone looking at Twitter or something. You know, now we're always getting information from 300 sources where during 9-11, I don't, you know, I could be wrong. I don't fully, rem you know, it's still 20 years ago, but I, I don't, don't think we were else. bombarded by all the, right. and, and a lot of, a lot of platforms look i'm all for uh you know more giving more voice to the people but uh, a, lot of, a lot of platforms or a lot of people have platforms that i'm just kind of like why is that you know they they have a following and i'm just like oh that's dangerous that that feels dangerous and um but i just hope that we can uh, someone was talking about we need to get like get back to teaching civics in school. So if we, people can understand just like, I mean, how do we get this trust back? I, that's, that's where I'm just like, I don't even know well, that, where to start there. Yeah. Correct. And, you know, we all need information, but we need facts. We don't yes. need, you know, the, the spreading of lies is the thing that I think has destroyed the civics and the, and, and the empathy and all of, all of the above. Yeah. And we, we need to get back to a place that we're, we're one in the same. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my friend, this has been so delightful getting to so know much you. Fun. You too. So man. much it's fun. Awesome. Tanya yeah. Fleetwood. Thank you so much for setting us up. And she, uh, I, I noticed while we were talking, it's Iowa. <laughs> it's Iowa. We were like, oh, we got the first letters. Oh, I think, right. you know, I better double check one more time that it was, um, <laughs> before I, <laughs> did she not say that? Cause that would be bad and I don't want to leave it. Oh my God. That would be awful. Iowa. We got it. Right. Iowa. We got it. Tanya from right. Iowa. Much continued success. I, I can't wait to see you really. You're, you're a talented man and, uh, and, oh, a, thanks, and a good one at that. So hey, congrats a pleasure. on the show. Congrats on this. Thanks. This is really awesome. Thanks. Really wishing you more continued success with it well I, you know maybe we'll you know continue the important conversation in one of the evening shows that i do if i you know because i'm trying to continue it's called conversations with alan dealing with the rise of hate and racism and anti-semitism so you know i'm trying to do one or two a month so Yo, and yeah, I, I really want to do one you know um i've wanted to and i'm trying to get a panel together you know on the stop uh the stop Asian hate campaign. So I'm trying to find some folks to put together for that. Let's talk about my theater company. Like we have a lot of activists with one of my theater companies who I'm sure would love to come on. And we could all, if you're looking for a panel, we just, trust me, we have our own internal <laughs> conversations right. all the time. So I, let's, let's chat. Awesome. I, yeah, we didn't even get to talk about your theater, but I absolutely, I'll email you and let's fill me in, fill me in. Okay, cool, cool, man. Stay well, my friend. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay warm. Stay you safe. You too. <laughs> yeah, uh, stay please. warm. You stay warm too. I know it's cold out there. <laughs> it's so cold in LA right now. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, Brandon. You too. Bye, everybody. I hope you enjoyed getting to know Brandon Scott. And like I said, don't forget his name. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of upcoming shows. Have a great afternoon, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Oh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Drink up.